going to be doing a project with you brought to you by Amaze in Pottery. Um, we're going to be doing the chip and dip plate and bowl set uh, which is a lovebird theme so we're gonna have this cute little bird plate which you have a sticker put on here and you have um, a branch roughly drawn on to give you the idea of where the plate the uh, branch will be um, and we'll be adding some berries. It comes with the little bowl that you have here for your salsa or um, whatever you're going to serve on your plate. Uh, you are going to also get in your kit a red paint, black paint, gray paint, white paint, and a small cup of a uh, plain red. This one is plain red. The other red has speckles in it, which is going to look really pretty when it melts down in the kiln. Um, in your kit, you also received two brushes, a larger brush and a smaller brush. Oh, and one last thing, um, I didn't put it in a cup, but you got a um, color called a jungle gem, um, which turns out to be a really beautiful sea foam green, there we go, sea foam green kind of color. Um, it's kind of aqua in the cup. Um, and that you should have a large, um, larger container of because we're using that on the background of the plate. The things that are not included in your kit or might, might be included, um, Q-tips. You may have gotten them, you might not have. I think we had them in there. If you don't, you might want to go grab some. Um, just to help out with making the berries. If you don't have them, we can use a finger, it's okay. Um, the other things that are not included in the kit, you're gonna want a paper towel for just drying off your brush. And you're going to want a little cold cup or bowl of water to clean your brushes out in between colors. Okay, um, and most importantly for this project, it's one of our sip end paints. So you're gonna need to make sure that you get the most important part for your little project to enjoy along the way. Um, with that being said, I guess I'm gonna turn my camera and we're gonna turn and start painting and I'll go over the painting process. Feel free at any time to pause the video so that you can catch up and do what you need to. And of course, if you're enjoying a couple sips, you might need an extra moment. So cheers and I'll be talking to you soon. All right, so as you can see, I've got my plate set up right here in front and I've got my jungle gem, um, that seafoam green color going right here. Um, so I'm just gonna start with this because I wanna paint the background on here and I want it to dry first because I wanna remove this sticker. The one item I didn't mention before was a tweezer. You could use your finger, you could use the back of the brush or a, a fingernail um, to peel the sticker off later. Um, uh, if you're having a hard time, I find tweezers are helpful. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint our plate. We're gonna start by going right over the sticker. That is okay. If you haven't painted with us before, the best thing to do is actually do three coats. Um, that helps the paint um, get a nice even coverage over the entire plate um, and it's gonna look really pretty um, on the plate. So that's why you got a large quantity of this green. It doesn't matter if you go over the sticker and over the branch because the um, branch was drawn on in pencil and the pencil will actually, it, it, it's called burn off, so it will dis disappear. And we're gonna remove the sticker later. So I think you guys get the gist of it. Um, right here, very easy. We just wanna cover up the plate. I started around the bird because I just wanna know where I started. three coats so we're just gonna go around this whole plate three coats and don't forget to enjoy your drink while you're working on this Thank you. 
doesn't have to be too perfect because, like I said, we're gonna do three coats. So, if it's a little um, mist or thin in areas, we're gonna go back over it later once this coat has kind of dried. You do wanna try to smooth out some of those uh, globs, I, would, I guess you could call them, because you don't want the um, paint to have thick spots. We do want it to be fairly even, but in the first coat, it's okay, because we're gonna go over it two more times. Okay, so I have my first coat pretty much done. I don't think I missed anywhere, really. Just a few thicker areas, but I can wipe thinner if I'd like. All right, um, well, now is actually the time that you should uh, sit back and enjoy that drink of yours while you're watching your plate dry or don't watch it, because then it's slow. So between coats, you can have a few sips. I decided to also use my heat gun, which is gonna be the pink tool I'm using later, but you can use a hair dryer to achieve the same effect. You wanna be careful um, to using it near the sticker because you'll notice the sticker might start to bubble and you don't wanna burn it. Okay, so now that I've finished my plate, I've got three coats, I'm gonna let this dry completely. Um, and then while this is drying, we can actually start painting our small bowl. Um, for the small bowl, we're gonna be using the uh, red with the speckles inside to fill the inside, and we're gonna do three coats in there. In between coats, if you would like, you can paint the outside. The outside of the cup, you can do um, kind of your choice. You can do it in, um, if you have enough black, you can do um, a black cup on the outside, or there should be enough of that seafoam uh, green color so that you can match your dip bowl to your plate if that's what you would like to do. It's kind of your choice, um, depending on the amount of paint that you have. We're gonna be using the white and the gray to paint in the birds, so we don't wanna use those up. So once this is dry, you'll see me peel the sticker off, and then we can get started on painting our bird, and I'll go over the step-by-step -step for that. Um, so I'm going to start painting my bowl. When painting your project, you do want to leave a blank spot on the bottom for your name. So you'll notice that on mine. Um, you want to be able to write your name on both pieces. So my plate is pretty much dry now, um, and I went and I grabbed myself a pair of tweezers um, because I'm going to actually peel this sticker off now. It's still kind of wet, but there's nothing shiny on the plate itself. There's just some wet spots on the sticker, but that doesn't matter because we're going to remove it. So I'm going to take the very points of my tweezers, um, and you don't actually have to scrape the paint itself. You can find an edge of the sticker and you can just kind of scrape at the edge don't worry the sticker is gonna get ruined that's okay you see here I have started to um, pull the sticker up and now I can just pull the sticker off it's just gonna pull off any of the paint that was on it and leave us a clean crisp little birdie on our plate and that's it. So now we are ready to actually start painting our little bird. Okay, so I'm gonna keep using actually my larger brush for this to start. Um, I do have my blackout, but I'm going to use that as a detail piece and I'm gonna use it last. So uh, I'm not gonna open that up. It's actually gonna, I'm only just gonna use my thin brush um, when applying the black paint. Um, so for the bird, I'm going to use my white and my gray here, and I might even add in a little bit of this red, but maybe just a touch and at the very end. So I can pop this open. This is really for the berries more than anything else, but uh, in the sample picture online, there was um, a little bit of a, a pinkish tone in the white paint um, on the belly. So I'm gonna use that as my guide. I'm gonna start with 
my white. When you start with the painting, you do want to start with your lightest colors because um, darker colors cover a lighter color easier. So I'm going to use my clean brush, I uh, dried it off, and my white paint. And I'm just going to start filling in the belly of the bird. And I can get right up to the sea foam color, that gray. And I just want to make a, a shape, like a almond-like shape on the belly of the bird and it goes up to the throat right under the, um, the beak. I'm just gonna fill this in with my white. We're gonna do a couple coats but the white really just makes the bird pop just a little more than if we left it. If you go over a little on the edge it's okay don't worry about it. So I'm just gonna kind of second coat this Okay, so we've got about two coats on there. I'm just gonna fill in with some more white. Again, trying to keep this almond-like shape on the belly of the bird. Um, now, the second and third coats do actually dry a little slower, which is gonna work to our advantage to get that pink into our bird's belly. So I'm gonna apply my third coat. I'm just gonna leave it kind of thick. And I'm gonna take my clean small brush and I'm gonna dip that into the red because I don't wanna contaminate it. I'm just gonna dip it in, swirl it, get a little on there. And I'm gonna tap it onto the wet white. And then I'm gonna use my big brush to pat it kind of make the feathers a little bit of a rosy color. I can keep adding more red, but this is just gonna make it look fluffy and feathery. And it just gives your bird a little more interest than a flat white belly. brush to add in some texture. Okay, nothing too crazy. If you want to get more red in there, I can clean off my little brush real fast. I can get it a little more rosy. It's up to you. The, the bird was red, white and gray mostly, but if you want to add in a little bit of a rosy touch onto the bird's belly, by all means, it's your bird. Everyone's gonna make a unique one. Okay? All right, so now I'm going to wash out the white from this brush and we're gonna go into our gray. Um, the gray does have some varying uh, in the sample picture. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my gray and we can actually mix in some of that white if you wanna light, lighten it to alter it. I know I said we start with our lights, but especially when you have a space like this, um, and you notice I didn't use the pink or the red into all of it because we're also going to add some texture into it later. But you can make it as rosy as you like. Okay, so I've got my gray. Now, the only thing I want to be aware of is in the middle of the head, I want to have a bird's eye. And um, remember, light colors don't cover dark colors well. So I want to try and leave the white of the eye. So I'm going to actually create the eye first by making the top of the head. I'm just creating a line up here that is across from the beak. And I wanna create like a, a U shape under it. And we can shrink the eye slowly. It might be better to do this with a smaller brush actually to just shape the eye in. Um, just because it's gonna be hard. It, you're gonna need a lot of white to make the white of the eye. Or if we just leave it white, we don't have to worry about it because your plate's white. So I'm just gonna, I guess that's a that's a decent size eye. I don't, you could make it smaller, it could be bigger. It's up to you, it's your bird. I'm just gonna leave it about that big. So the rest of this is the wing and the tail and the other wing on the other side, which on this small part, you can use the small brush. But for this stuff, I'm just gonna use the big brush to fill in my bird feathers.
if you don't go over it solidly, you'll get like this kind of washy, um, transparent kind of effect happening. You can kind of see through the paint right here in front of my finger. Um, if you want that kind of an effect, you can leave it like that to get that kind of uh, fuzz or blended kind of um, white and gray. But um, for this sake, I'm going to just use the gray and make it opaque and I'm gonna mix the white into it in my demonstration. But you guys can feel free to experiment a little with your bird. So I'm just filling in the shape and giving it a couple coats to make sure it's got good coverage. Nice solid gray little bird. It's okay if you go over the beak area because the beak is gonna be black and we're gonna go over the gray with the black. to get, like again, I said, this um, little wing piece over here, I'm gonna use my small brush just to fill in that little triangle-like shape that we left. And um, this would also be a good time to rinse out this little brush and we can use the small brush again to bring the other paint color into our bird. Now, most of this is dried pretty much, but my brush still, my large brush still has some gray on it. So I'm just gonna take some of this white. I kind of want to blend where the tail, the underbelly of the tail goes into the, the white of the belly. So I'm just gonna go over it a little. Okay, you can kind of see the gray is definitely showing through. This is just to add some markings on it. Like I said, the gray um, is stronger than the white, so it's gonna really kind of cover it up uh, or blend, but um, the gray will is stronger, it will show through really. So I'm just kind of blending the underbelly of the bird right there um, into tail and the belly together. You don't have to do this. You can leave them separated if this scares you. Don't, by all means, you know, you don't have to do it. Okay, so small brush is just in the white. Just dabbing it, just to kind of blend it out. Uh, we can use the small brush to create some, like, feather marks on the bird, too, so I can create some striations in the gray uh, with the white. Um, if I want it to look more feathery. Um, this is just gonna show up as a light sweep um, kind of on the bird when it's fired because the white is not strong enough to really cover the gray. So I'm just adding in some markings on the bird. If you want the eye of the bird to be really white, this is the time to paint it. You don't have to. Messing it up. I'm only gonna do one coat because it's it's already white. Um, okay. Okay. 
So that's just the tail of our bird. The wing of the bird is up here too. So this is like gonna be the end of the other, the wing on this side. So we can just add some marks there just to create some different feather effects. It's fine. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna rinse this brush out. We're gonna get the black open. Feel free at any point if you need to, pause the video, do what you need to to catch up or feel comfortable in the state of your bird, and then of course, pick up where you've left off. Okay, so I'm gonna use the black. Um, if you get too much on your brush, you're gonna get really thick lines, and we don't really want those giant thick lines, so you can roll the brush uh, on the side of the cup to get some of that black off and then it's just just a tiny amount um, I'm gonna start with the eye um, so for the eye of the bird I want to sweep over the top of the eye just lightly just touching the plate you don't want to press down too hard because if you do you'll get thicker lines uh, which we're gonna do for the branch but for now we want to keep it a little thinner for the details on our bird so again dip it I'm gonna roll it and I'm just gonna gently sweep, just touching to get the eye of my little bird. Uh, and then I'm gonna create the ball of the eye. I'm creating a semicircle. And I wanna make it look a little lifelike, so I'm actually gonna leave a little white spot for the shine of the eye. Now, a bird is feathery. So you don't have to have, these lines don't have to be perfect. You can have little striations in your lines. It's okay. I'm going to create the bird beak. Um, again, dipping and rolling on the side because I don't want too much on my brush. Um, and I'm going to start by making the little point where I want the beak to stop. Right about there, somewhere. Come down to the chin. And I'm just gonna outline the beak first. And I want the beak to curve up the nose, like so. Get a little more paint. From here, it's gonna come up and curve, just like that. Okay, and then we're just filling in the shape. See, like I said, we're gonna cover some of that gray. So don't be afraid of covering the beak with the gray. dries pretty quick the first coat. And bird beaks are all sorts of shapes, so you know if you change the shape of the bird beak, it's okay. Everyone's gonna be a little different. Okay, so next I'm just gonna outline the bird. Again, I don't want too much um, black on this because I do want the lines to be a little thinner. If you're um, afraid of the brush, the brush is not handling so neatly for you. You can also use the back of the brush. You can dip it in here in the paint. Um, I just tap off extra so it's not dripping and then you can use this to actually draw. Like you can take the end of the brush and just kind of use that if I turn it slowly. Again, it's a feathery bird so you know you can get those kinds of fuzzy lines. Um, but you can use the end of the brush if that's something you want to do or try. You test it. And uh, if you don't like it, then don't do it. Okay, so I'm gonna go around the bird and I'm just gonna make these kinds of feathery, brushy marks. Um, this is just gonna outline our bird and also give our bird a little more texture. So it doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth line. This is really adding a little texture to our bird, making it look fluffy.
So I've done the head, the belly. I'm gonna do the little wing over here because it's just a simple little shape. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. take this and do the back. This is a wing. Remember, this is supposed to be a wing back here. Um, so you can keep this a little straighter if you can or if you want to, and then you can create feathers on here. So I'll show you doing the inside, but first I'm just gonna trace the outline of the wing. And I'm gonna outline the tail. These I want to try to make them a little smoother just because these are large feathers down here, but I mean, you do what you do, and it's okay if it's not smooth. Lightly just touching the plate with the tip of the brush, gently dragging it. Okay? Alright, so we've got the outline of our bird, and now we want this to look like a tail, and we want that to look like a wing. So to create our feathers, I wanna create, I'm gonna add a line here at the bottom. These are down at the bottom are longer. So I'm just gonna add a line that divides from the back. And I'm gonna add one more, and get a little more paint. And add another line that divides, there's two. Okay, and then they just kinda sweep up each other and that's going to create like the, the bottom of the wing there. Now for the tail, we're just going to do a couple of U's down here. So we've got this one on the outside we're going to do first because this is closer to us. So I'm just going to sweep up. This is already down. Now I'm going to sweep up. You can have more than three if you'd like. It's up to you. Whatever you think looks nice on your bird. You could divide these two over here uh, if you feel like making it a double feather sticking out over there. Okay? Um, and then we're going to create layers of U shapes, U lines. Just U's. Really long U's. Think of it that way. You don't want to make them too um, small because then you're going to have lots and lots and lots and lots of them. So we're going to create long U rows. So here I'm going to go U and back up, U and back up, U and back up. I want to try and keep them long. Okay, we're going to start with just on the outside edge and we can add more to the middle if you want the wing to be thicker and fuller. Definitely, I could definitely add more feathers over on this side, but first I'm just going to create my rows again. I'm going to go turn around and go back back, turn around, and go back up towards the head. So the letter U, or J, in this case, we're making like J's. Okay, and as we go up, they might get a little shorter. So in here, I'm going to add some shorter ones above these, just like so. And then right next to the head, we can even make another little row of them. We will use one, two, three. Why not? They go all the way to the belly. Okay, so now you can add in those extras. If you have space for them, I mean, why not? Remember, everything doesn't have to be perfect. You know, if they're a little crooked, that's okay. It's just gonna look like the bird ruffled their feathers. So we've got our little bird. Now, I'm not gonna have too much paint on my brush. What I wanna do is I wanna, before I draw in my branch, um, if I wanna add some texture to my bird, I remember how I said we could add feathers in here, like some fluff. Um, I don't want a lot of paint on my brush. And you can draw really little, thin U's on the belly, all the way up, just to create some texture on your bird, just to get them fluffy. 
Okay, you can do that all over the belly um, on the sides. And this, this also adds in a little bit of shading. So you can go a little heavier on the bottom of the belly. It makes it look like it's a little darker down there. If you feel up to it, you want to, you could add some brush marks on the head just to make them look fuzzy. Okay, that's kind of it for this part with black. And then we're gonna be, be making our um, branch. Now, the branch kinda disappeared. As you can see on my plate, it's pretty hard to see. I don't even know if you can make it out. I can just make it out. It's really just a guideline. It was just to give you an idea. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the far side of the plate behind the bird. Okay, somewhere over here. And I have a good amount of paint on here. I don't have it dripping, but I do have a good amount of paint on my brush. We can go over this line a time or two and make it just the way you like. So I'm gonna start on the edge and I wanna come down to the bottom belly of the bird. So this first part of the line is gonna come down here because this is where the feet would normally be. So I'm gonna make my line start up here behind the bird and it's gonna come across our wing and down to the belly, right here. You see my paint is um, not making a solid line, that's okay. If you want it to be a solid black line, you can go back over it with more paint. For now, we're just getting it started. Now, the trick with um, the branch is you want the ends of it to be thinner, so after you go to the belly of your bird, right here, I'm gonna make it a little darker so you can see it. We want to come out towards the bottom of our plate, but we want to lift away. Um, another great trick is to hold your brush when you're doing the little branches far away from the ferrule, this, the uh, silver part here, okay? Um, that makes it have an organic wiggle to it. So I'm going to start here. And I'm just gonna drag it down. I'm gently twisting my brush. I don't know if you can see it. And I'm gonna pull up so that my branch gets a little thinner. Um, I kind of want my branch a little thicker on this side. Not too much thicker, but a little thicker because, I mean, this is where it attaches to the tree. So I just want this to be a little bit thicker. Okay, that's fine by me. And then we want to make some more twigs off of here. So I'm thinking, why don't we add... Now, this is personal taste. You can add as many or as few twigs as you like. I'm gonna start one over here and I'm gonna have it come out towards the middle of my plate. They're always thicker where they attach to um, another branch, but we don't wanna make everything too thick because we want our bird to be the focus. We don't wanna cover up our bird with a bunch of thick branches. So just using the point, if you are holding the brush down low, you're just using the point of the brush. So I'm gonna just use the point of my brush to just drag a branch, drag a branch. Okay, like so. We can add a branch coming out of there. You wanna think like the letter Y. The branch is split like a Y. So I've made another twig kind of growing out of this branch. Uh, I'm gonna add some more twigs onto my uh, branch. So I'm gonna add, I got a space over here. We can add some over here because we're gonna get some color by doing that. So I'm gonna add my little twig. And this time I'm gonna split it into three. Okay. Get to these areas over there. Everybody's branches are going to look different, and that's what makes them perfect. Now, if you can 
Let's see what I was doing down here. Just adding some more twigs. I'm gonna add another twig coming out this way. So I have an empty space over here. Remember, you don't have to fill the whole plate up with branches. Um, just some of it. As many as you like. Sometimes less is more, but hey, if you're enjoying br making branches, then make the branches. All right, I think I'm actually pretty happy with my branches. I don't mind leaving a little space over here in this area because this is where maybe I'm gonna place my bowl when this is all done and I'm serving something on my plate, my veggies and dip or chips and whatever you're gonna put on here. It's not really a chip bowl, but hey, you never know. Okay, um, I'm not quite done with my black. We can outline the berries as in the example that was online. But first, we're gonna go over to our red. We're gonna do our berries. Now, um, I'm gonna use the Q-tips because this is gonna give me some cute little round little red balls and that will make the perfect size berries, I think, for this project. Um, if you don't have a Q-tip, you could use your pinky finger. So I'm gonna dip it in. And I'm going to place it at the end of the twigs. So I'm just going to dot it. Dot it. Dot. At the end of every little twig, I'm just going to make a little berry. Sometimes it could be a little bigger. smaller. I'm just going to end up with some cute little red berries. Okay, now, um, because this is on top of another glaze, I do recommend doing at least a second coat to make your berries nice and red and bright um, and so that they stand out on the glaze that they are on top of. Uh, typically speaking, you would want them to be dry, but since we're using a Q-tip and we're just dotting it, I think you could go ahead and do that. the boring part because well maybe it's the exciting part because now you have to wait for it to dry so that we can outline each of the berries with the black um, if you're having a really hard time with the brush and creating some very thin lines um, something I didn't mention before is you can use a toothpick if you dip the toothpick and then trace gently around the berries you can get a nice thin line as well um, but just be uh, careful you don't scrape off the glaze that is already on the plate. Um, let's see if I... If you rush this, there's a good chance you could blur the berry with the black. So I would recommend waiting um, and wait for them to be dry. It would just be a little easier, I think, to go around it, but this is a good time to say cheers, have a sip. Let me just show you. Um, you want to go around the very outside edge 
of the berries with the black to create a black outlined berry as such. Um, again, I recommend waiting until it's dry to do that part, but for the sake of time and you guys, I'll just show you what it would look like. tip of the brush to outline the berries. So in this one, I don't know if you can see it, because I am being uh, impatient, the black is actually mixing with the red, so I'm not gonna get that nice crisp black outline like I've got on my bird um, and for my branches. So just keep that in mind. If you don't wait, that's what's gonna happen. Your paints will get a little mixed, which maybe you don't mind, maybe that's what you want, but just so you know what's gonna happen if you don't wait. Okay, well, as you can see, as it goes, um, I'm gonna finish outlining my little black, uh, my little berries with the black line, and um, that would be the end of this tutorial um, for the painting process. So I'm just gonna finish this up and then I'll give you one last look at it as it's complete. All right, so here you can see my plate is actually almost completely dry and my bowl is completed as well. Um, so this is what your project could look like. I chose to do my bowl in black. You didn't have to do the side in black. This is a beautiful turquoise color or sea foam color. It's gonna look really special. Um, I just decided to make mine black on the outside. Um, just a note, if you're seeing this, uh, that means that your plate is not completely dry. You don't want to pack it up while it's still wet because you don't want your glazes to get smudged and destroyed. Also, something I should have mentioned in the beginning was to make sure that you write your name. If you don't write your name on your plate, it makes it very difficult to match it to the person who drops it off. So please make sure that you've written your name on both the bottom of your bowl and your plate in pencil. It only has to be in pencil, and even if it's on top of glaze, if you did paint thoroughly on the bottom of your bowl or plate or something, um, we can use a, a glaze pen to write your name onto it, but at least make sure your name is on both pieces. Um, fill out your drop-off form and um, leave it at the studio to get fired in the kiln, and we'll give you a call when it's all complete. It's gonna look amazing. Can't wait to see them. All right, everyone, I hope you had fun. Cheers. <laughs>